Today is Sunday, March 12th, 2023. Hey, how are we already flying through March? I thought it just became March. What's going on? Did I even pay my March rent? Who knows? <laughs> uh, I seriously, that happens to me all the time these days. I didn't think of rambling at the beginning of this video. It's just coming out. Something I have a problem with is making sure that I've paid all my bills. And so what I do is I'll just pay them like twice a month these days. I, I just like make sure to check if I've paid my bills multiple times a month because it has happened that just three months will fly by and it'll be like, oh, I, I completely forgot about the internet bill. Like I was paying the other ones, but has that happened to any of you guys? Do you sometimes forget about paying bills these days because like three months fly by and you're just slips your mind? Uh, so I'm going to read Isaiah 42. The reason I did want to say a little something about time is because we did just have the, the time holiday. There's a few holidays that are calendar holidays or clock holidays. This is kind of a clock holiday, spring forward, fall back. Not every state in USA does it. And, of course, people let the clock rule their lives these days. This fake human construct. And tick-tock, tick-tock, tick. Instead of living your life by sun up, sun down, which is the much more natural. We're supposed to go back to Genesis. I'll see memes of this every once in a while, and it's a refreshing, refreshing meme. The sun tells the time of day. The moon tells the day of the month. And the stars tell you the month of year that you're in. And God made this place with a built-in calendar system and a built-in time system. We don't need clocks. Okay, Isaiah 42. I'm just going to read this. Beautiful chapter of the Bible. Open up to any chapter of Isaiah and you're going to be blown away. Isaiah chapter 42. Behold my servant whom I uphold, mine elect in whom my soul delighteth. I have put my spirit upon him. He shall bring forth judgment to the Gentiles. He shall not cry, nor lift up, nor cause his voice to be heard in the street. A bruised reed shall he not break, and the smoking flax shall he not quench. He shall bring forth judgment unto truth. He shall not fail, nor be discouraged, till he have set judgment in the earth, and the isles shall wait for his law. Thus saith God the Lord, he that created the heavens and stretched them out, he that spread forth the earth, and that which cometh out of it. He that giveth bread unto the people upon it, and spirit to them that walk therein. I just love these proclamations of God's power and might, and it does bring you closer to God when you know that you live under the firmament, and that, and these things, when, Oftentimes, when they're giving glory to God in times past, you see that they make references to these things that do give glory to God. Outer space ball land gives, does not give glory to God. Well, it's deception, and all of that stuff is constructed to take you away from God. So I just love it. Reading this stuff makes me feel grounded and, yes, gives glory to God to know about these things, to know that earth is flat and that God literally is above all of us to understand up and down, that there is only one up and one down, and that we all share it together. It's not... That's one thing that's not different for, for all of us. God is above all of us, up. Okay. I, the Lord, have called thee in righteousness, and will hold thine hand, and will keep thee, and give thee for a covenant of the people, for a light of the Gentiles to open the blind eyes, to bring out the prisoners from the prison, and them that sit in darkness out of the prison house. I am the Lord, that is my name, and my glory will I not give to another, neither my praise to graven images. Behold, the former things are come to pass, and new things do I declare. Before they spring forth, I tell you of them. We have so many prophets, so many, so many things we've been reading in Isaiah that prophesies about future events. Isaiah prophesizes about Jesus Christ. And there, there's other, so much of the Old Testament. Psalm, Psalm 22 prophesizes of the crucifixion of, of Jesus Christ, for another example. Sing unto the Lord a new song, and his praise from the end of the earth. 
ye that go down to the sea and all that is therein, the isles and the inhabitants thereof. Let the wilderness and the cities thereof lift up their voice, the villages that Kedar doth inhabit. Let the inhabitants of the rock sing. Let them shout from the top of the mountains. Let them give glory unto the Lord and declare his praise in the islands. The Lord shall go forth as a mighty man. He shall stir up jealousy like a man of war. He shall cry, yea, roar. He shall prevail against his enemies. I have long time holding my peace. I have been still and refrained myself. Now will I cry like a travailing woman. I will destroy and devour at once. I will make waste mountains and hills and dry up all their herbs. And I will make the rivers islands and I will dry up the pools. And I will bring the blind by a way that they knew not. I will lead them in paths that they have not known. I will make darkness light before them and crooked things straight. These things will I do unto them and not forsake them. That's beautiful. We will not be forsaken. I just just referenced Psalm 22, which Jesus references on the cross when he says, God, why have you forsaken me? And it does feel like that a lot of times, but there's promise that we will not be forsaken in the end. Who else has always known that in the end, everything is going to work out? It doesn't matter how bleak things get. In the end, everything is going to work out. And I've always felt that. And it's true. They shall be turned back. They shall be greatly ashamed that trust in graven images that say to the molten images, ye are our gods. Hear ye deaf and look ye blind that ye may see who is blind but my servant or deaf as my messenger that I sent. Who is blind as he that is perfect and blind as the Lord's servant. Seeing many things, but thou observest not opening the ears, but he heareth not. The Lord is well pleased for his righteousness sake. He will magnify the law and make it honorable. So these are some interesting verses, like 19. Who is blind but my servant, or is, or is deaf as my messenger? And so much of the gospel is about Jesus is here for the broken and, and to find the lost sheep. It's not about the ones that are already found. And so many of us, I was totally blind. And it's... To give glory to God because it wasn't it's all because of God that we were able to see and it's the way that he gets glory because we realize that we didn't do it ourselves that when when I was doing things myself everything was going so badly in my life and it was God who opened my eyes and so in this way by first being blind, we're bringing glory to God by, by saying, I couldn't even see until you showed me how to see. Anyways, just some thoughts. The Lord is well pleased for his righteousness sake. He will magnify the law and make it honorable. But this is a people robbed and spoiled. They are all of them snared in holes and they are hidden prison houses. They are for a prey, and none delivereth, for a spoil, and none saith, Restore. Who among you will give ear to this? Who will hearken and hear for the time to come? Who gave Jacob for a spoil and Israel to the robbers? Did not the Lord, he against whom we have sinned? For they would not walk in his ways, neither were they obedient unto his law. And it's been the same way since the beginning. What happened in the garden? God gave Adam and Eve... One, he had it so simple back then. There's one thing that you can't do here. Don't do it. And they did it. So from the beginning, we have been sinning and transgressing against God's law. So nothing, nothing different today. And it's a big deal when you know God is real and that we, of our own choice, decided to go against the very things that God told us not to do. It's a big deal. And that's why he sent Jesus. So Because it is such a big deal. 
when we sin, how is that any different than what Adam and Eve did in the garden? And it's a big deal to sin against God, the creator of everything. And that's why we need Jesus. And to repent. That's also why we need to repent. It is so important to repent for your sin. And part of repenting is changing your ways. It's not just saying sorry a million times and continuing to do the same thing. It's an action. Repenting has an action aspect of it too. And that's changing, turning around, turning away from sin, not just saying sorry. Repenting is not the same thing as saying sorry. Okay, so I'm just going to read from verse 24 again, and, and that's it. There's only 25 verses in this chapter. Who gave Jacob for a spoil and Israel to the robbers? Did not the Lord, he against whom we have sinned? For they would not walk in his ways, neither were they obedient unto his law. Therefore he hath poured upon him the fury of his anger and the strength of battle, and it hath sent him on fire round about. Oh, and it hath set him on fire round about, yet he knew not. And it burned him, yet he laid it not to heart. This is all very interesting in, in this. Uh, I'm curious of your interpretations of this. 42, too, numerically is a very important number. You know how Hitchhiker's Guide or whatever talks about 42 being the answer to life, the universe, and everything. 42 is a number you see pop up a lot. Washington State is the 42nd state. And this does seem like a special chapter of Isaiah that could be directly referencing Jesus. Hope you enjoyed this video. God bless everyone.